Next up is multi-bounce, which is similar to bounce. The biggest difference is uh, the balls have a random velocity when they start. They might fall straight down, they might move to the right, they mo might move to the left. And this time maybe I'll walk through more of the code. Here in preload we load the ball ping. In create we add a group for the balls so that we can deal with them, deal with the collection of them. And then we add a time event so that twice a second we add a ball. Then we add a collider um, between the balls. So you can see that they interact with each other. They, it's usually pretty good. Sometimes they squash down and occupy the same space, but generally that's working. In update, we look to see, and let me just close this thing to get a little more room. We look to see if we have uh, more than 10 uh, balls. And if we do, we get the uh, first one that's alive. That's the oldest one. And then we add a tween. And tween is kind of short for between. And it's a way of changing some property of a sprite over time. And the time duration is a half a second. And the property is the alpha channel. Alpha controls the transparency. So what we're doing is over a half a second. So watch the balls after they've been around for a while. They fade out. They fade out over a half a second. See if you can see one. It's kind of like looking for shooting stars, I guess. You don't know where it's going to happen unless you plan a little bit. But you see some fading away. The alpha gradually diminishes to zero, and then that makes it fade away. And then when that half second has passed, then we destroy the ball. Then, what are we doing here? Then for each ball, we set the angular velocity to match the horizontal velocity. So you can see when they're rolling, they actually appear to be rolling on the floor. They're turning the right amount to go along with how fast they're moving horizontally. That's done by this. Okay, add ball. Add ball. We add a ball here in create. Where else do we add balls? Where was that? This. Oh, yeah, this is it. Uh, I was confused because this line 9 is too big to fit here, so it goes to the next line. Um, so we add a ball twice a second. Here's add ball. What does it do? It always puts them in the center horizontally. And always 50 pixels down. And we add the ball. We set the bounciness. We played with the bounciness before along with the drag. Collide World Bounce makes them um, bounce off the sides, the top, and the bottom. And then the velocity is a random value, the x part of the velocity. So set velocity takes two arguments. This is the first argument. This is the x part of it. And that's a random number between minus 400 and positive 400. And the y value is always zero. So it's not moving at all when we, it's not moving vertically when we create it. It only moves vertically as a result of gravity pulling on it. And then we set the scale to 0 0.25 because the, the graphic is bigger than what we want. So this is the size when it loads here of the ball. So one quarter of it is, is that. Um, okay, that's the whole program. So what are we supposed to do? Change the ball generation rate. I showed that last time. The ball spawn position. Do you remember I showed just where that, where that is? Um, add ball to this position. So the half the width. So if I wanted them to start from a third of the way over, I could say the width over three. And maybe I want them to start a little lower. I could increase that y, y value, which makes it lower. So now it should be one third of the way over and 150 pixels down. So there's that. 
Change the range of random x-axis velocities. Okay, that is this. Uh, wait, no, it's this. Then the range is now minus 400 to plus 400. So let's say we want to double that. Now they should move quite a bit faster horizontally. Yeah, that's better. They started out kind of slowly because it's random. Could be anywhere in there, anywhere in that range. Uh, change the fade out time. The fade out time for when they disappear is a half a second. If we want it to take longer, maybe we want it to take uh, five seconds. Let's do that, see what that looks like. So the, after, the, after you have 10 balls, the 11th ball appears, then the first ball will start this gradual fade out that takes place over five seconds. So see if you can see it. Is it going to be this guy? Is anybody fading yet? This guy is fading. See this? So he's the alpha value is gradually moving to zero. And there he goes. Change the number of balls that can exist. We did that for the other program, but I think uh, we, we look for the Look for the 10 uh, here. Make that a bigger number. But really, since the fade out is so long, you could say that they exist for a lot longer than that. Uh, OK. Change the way the ball spin, angular velocity. Let me just reset that fade out thing. And then the angular velocity was this part. So I, I just kind of, through trial and error, I found the 1.4. But if we were to change it to the horizontal velocity times 10, you see they'll spin more, and it won't look, it won't look right. So you see how they're spinning. Wait till one kind of rolls on the floor, you'll see this guy. It's spinning much faster. It's like it's slipping on a, a slippery floor. Finally, have the ball sizes be random. That's here in add ball. Right now it's set to one quarter. We can use the JavaScript function um, math.random, which gives us a number between 0 and 1, which is uh, exactly what we want. And there we go, from the small to the big. Okay, that was a big one. That's multi-bounce.